everybody, I'm back. This is Nathan on Shuffle, and this is my latest episode of New Music Weekly. It is January 13th, 2023 at the time of filming this. And this is the show where I give you guys the top prog headlines of the week, give you guys some great singles to go check out that were released, and just give you updates on the channel and what's been going on here and what you can expect coming in the future. So really excited to dive in today. I have a really long list of news because it's been a few weeks since I've done a show like this. So stuff is kind of built up and there's been a few things I've been excited to talk about. Really the supersized list today is the big list of prog singles that I have for you guys. So check it all out in the description. That's the best way to check out all of the items that I'm talking about here. Check out links to the songs. I also have a, a Spotify playlist where I put all the songs that are available on Spotify at least in a big playlist where you can listen to them. So I, I recommend you check that out if you're a Spotify user. But otherwise, I've linked all the YouTube links as well in the description. So let's get into the prog headlines. I'm really excited today to talk to you guys. So hopefully you'll enjoy this episode. Uh, number one, this is kind of a little bit of a double header because I think the news is similar. But prog magazine articles have been declaring the end of a few different notable bands that I really love. And my wonder is, are they doing this a little prematurely or, you know, is it genuine? Is this the end, spelling the end of some of my favorite groups? In one case, it's probably accurate. <laughs> and that's the case for Transatlantic. So Prog Magazine put out an article that uh, basically that this is the last release for Transatlantic, the upcoming live album, The Final Flight, live at Olympia, um, releasing on February 17th. And the funny thing is, is that it's really not the final release from them because they do have like a Morse Fest uh DVD that should be coming out later, Blu-ray, all that kind of stuff, that should be coming out later, um, but, you know, it's, it's, they're really signaling the end of an era for the band, and they have been for quite some time, like Portnoy has made a lot of comments that this is probably the last shows they'll do together, and, you know, there, there was a lot of statements, they came out with a single, which will be in the singles list, of Rose Colored Glasses, uh, one of the tracks from The Whirlwind that they performed live, and they each said something that does seem to speak to the end of the band, really, or at least the most likely scenario is the end of the band. But they're, of course, leaving the door open in case for the future, but it does seem like they're all pretty much in the same space. So looking at some of their quotes here. So Roy Stolt says, uh, I walked off the stage in Paris and knew it was the end of the tour, also quite possibly of the band. Portnoy says people f felt like they were witnessing the end of something in Paris. So it was the equivalent of the Beatles up on the roof of their Apple headquarters. Um, so he's he's likening it to one of the last appearances of the Beatles. So Petro Wavas uh, says playing there was a bit of a bucket list moment, especially as it felt like we had probably come to the end of the road with Transatlantic. Um, and Neil has also mentioned this as well. Um and Portnoy says, if it indeed ends up being the last show we ever play, we could not have ended on a higher note. So they're really promoting this album in a way to say this is like their big finish, their big finale moment. And it's it's somewhat of a disappointing thing for a fan like me who wishes they'd continue. I think a lot of it comes down to Royna Stolt and feeling like, you know, the band has run their course, they're all a bit older, so if they were to continue, they'd all be really old, and, and it might be difficult for them to tour getting into those older years. And I think Portnoy has somewhat mentioned that, like, what more can they do from this point forward? They've already done this big, massive double album with multiple versions. You know, maybe they've uh, done the best they can do at this point. So that was something that really struck me. At first, I was a little skeptical of like, well, they didn't quite say it was the end. They're just, they're still leaving that window open that there could be possibility. But the more they talk about it, the more it does feel like this is a final, final gasp for the band. And this is their last uh, album that will be seen from them in a, in a, in a large way. So uh, the other that I wanted to mention is, is Porcupine Tree. Um, they took, uh, Prog Magazine took a little bit of a quote from Stephen Wilson to mean that it was the end of Porcupine Tree, which he didn't quite say it like that. So I wanted to read uh, Stephen Wilson's Twitter message that he 
talks about Porcupine Tree with. He says, Happy New Year to you all, first and foremost. A big thank you to everyone that enjoyed the Porcupine Tree closure slash continuation album slash shows and my limited edition of one book during the past year. Coming in 2023 will be my new album, a 10-track, 65-minute musical journey. That's kind of hard to describe, but suffice to say it's different again, not to mention totally pretentious in a good way. It will be released by Virgin Music UK. Uh, Here's the applicable part. Meanwhile, the likely final porcupine tree shows will be a handful of festival appearances over the summer check the band's channels for more info so by saying likely final pt shows uh a lot of people are speculating that means the end of porcupine tree in total could be that he's talking about the end of porcupine trees tour for this cycle and that they may continue in the future but the album title of being closure continuation you know they're somewhat playing cheekily with that idea that this could be the end of the band it could be the beginning of a new chapter and so i feel like it's still left up in the air and i don't think we can definitively say from what stephen wilson is saying that porcupine tree is is dead and gone but who knows you know it's hard to tell what the future will hold and a lot of these bands that were supposedly done for good have reunited and done things uh in their future so it's not really a done deal uh ever and i think both Stephen Wilson and the members of Transatlantic are still wording things in a way that they could get away with coming back together for a reunion tour or a special album or some other appearance or a festival show. I don't think the door is officially totally closed, but it's mostly closed in a lot of ways, I think, for these groups, which are two seminal prog bands that I've always loved and talk about quite highly on the channel. So I wanted to spend some time on that and memorializing them in in a certain way. Uh, Number two, uh, recent news that has really struck the, not just prog community, but the music community at large, Jeff Beck uh, passed away at at age 78. It looks like it was him contracting bacterial meningitis. He peacefully passed away on Tuesday, January 10th. Um, So this was a pretty big loss in the music community. He's a legendary guitarist, one of the big uh, names when it comes to guitar virtuosos. Uh, He's played with a lot of different people over over the course of a long storied career so he's a huge figure very influential in music um over the course of his career he became regarded as one of the most innovative and influential guitarists of all time incorporating elements of blues and jazz into his playing and developing a characteristic hard edge style he could also shred with the best of them over the course of his career he won eight grammy awards seven for best rock instrumental performance uh, so that's really impressive. So, And he has a lot of uh, credits to his name. He was a collaborator with several different artists, playing tracks with, uh, playing on tracks by Stevie Wonder, Rod Stewart, Tina Turner, Diana Ross, Mick Jagger, Kate Bush, Duff McKagan, ZZ Top, Joe Cocker, Brian May, Pretenders, Roger Waters, John Bon Jovi, just a who's who of like everyone major in music he's played with at some point. So just such a huge artist and such a big loss in the music community. So that was such a big deal. Um, also passed away was Frank Wyatt of Happy the Man, a multi-instrumentalist and keyboard player for that uh, prog band, Happy the Man, one of the older prog bands that have been around the block for quite a while. So I wanted to mention that as well. Uh, after a prolonged journey with kidney cancer, uh, Frank Wyatt passed. So uh, another passing of someone notable in the prog world. So wanted to mention those passings as news items for this uh, show today. Item number three, prog headline, Peter Gabriel shares his first track from upcoming album, And he mentions that he is going to release a new song each full moon. It seems like in some of his fan uh, videos or or announcement videos he's been making that this seems to be the schedule that he's looking at is releasing a new song each full moon, which could mean that the album itself may come quite later in the year after all these different single releases. So it's, it's possibly a different interesting way to release the album or release the new music he's been working on. But this new uh, single, uh, Pen Up, Panopticom has been making the rounds and a lot of people seem very impressed with it. I really like it as well. I think it really has that classic Peter Gabriel sound and he really sounds great on it. So it really it really speaks to the fact that there might be some uh, good music ahead on this upcoming album, I.O., that he's going to be slowly releasing out. 
I mean, he's also doing a tour uh, featuring a lot of the music from this upcoming album. So a lot of stuff to be excited about in the world of Peter Gabriel. And of course, that single will be in the prog singles list in the description. Uh, so I wanted to mention that. Uh, really exciting in the world of Peter Gabriel with some new music and a tour. Uh, I think Peter Gabriel is going to be a big part of this upcoming year. So wanted to put that out there. And then speaking of Peter Gabriel and Genesis connection, uh, Genesis announced a five disc BBC box set featuring previously unreleased material. So this is a big, massive box set, 53 track, five CD and a 24 track triple LP of BB broadcast that's set to be released on March 10th. The new set has been being curated by Tony Banks, of course, legendary uh, Genesis member, uh, and the group's longtime engineer and producer, Nick Davis. This is the first time these tracks have been released on vinyl, and the first time a majority of the 1987 Wembley show have been made available in an audio-only format. So a lot of exclusive stuff here. Uh, really fun to see these BBC broadcasts spanning the band's career all the way from 1970 up to 1998, featuring all three of the group's vocalists, Peter Gabriel, Phil Collins, and Ray Wilson. So it's really a career-spanning set with a a lot of different appearances throughout the years, appearances on Night Ride and John Peel. Uh, the set encompasses both of the group's uh, Niebworth performances from both 1978 and 1992, as well as their much loved 1980 show at London's uh, Lyceum and the sellout run of shows at Wembley in 1987. The uh, set also includes material from the NEC in 1998 and Paris Theatre and Night Ride sessions from the early 70s, as well as the much sought after encore version of Watcher of the Skies at Wembley Empire Pool in 1975. So, just a really cool, expansive set that should be exciting for fans of the band. Um, and I know a lot of people have expressed a lot of interest in this, so something definitely worth looking out for and picking up if you're a fan of Genesis. Uh, number five, new Trevor Rabin solo album, Rio, is going to be set for release this year. I wanted to mention this because I mentioned a lot of Yes-related news on the channel. And of course, Trevor Rabin is a former Yes guitarist. And he's a really notable musician and producer and does all of this stuff. And so this should be a really cool album coming out. Um, should be There's only a little bit of a tease at the moment. There's not much more information about it, but... The album's going to be called Rio, coming out this year. The cover's done. Uh, the record company is done. It will be announced soon. More details on the album. So, But I just wanted to put that out there. In the Prague interview, Raven suggested he'd be working with several guests, including Vinny Kaluta. I was hoping to persuade Rick Wakeman, with whom he worked in with, with and Yes, uh, to join him for a track or two. So we'll see how that comes to fruition. But there's some album artwork and some hints that there might be some fun stuff coming for Trevor Rabin. And a little bit of a bonus news I'll, I'll add in here. Uh, item number six, Life Signs announced plans for a new live and studio album for this year. Uh, UK prog rockers Life Signs are pretty... Uh, they're gaining some steam, I think, in the prog community. I hear a lot of people talk about them. They were really notable on this previous uh, Cruise to the Edge. I know they were one of the highlights and big performances there. They have an incredible lineup of albums to their name at this point. Um, so they're currently planning a new live CD DVD release in 2023, along with recording their next studio album set for release later in the year. Um, and as part of the promotional activity for these releases, they're going on tour um, in the UK and beyond from February. So should be a busy year for Life Signs. Really cool new prog act um, that really has made a big impression in their short run here so far. And so I think they're a pretty notable band to follow. And they also placed in the 2022 Reader's Poll for best... Um, Number four, best band. Number three, a keyboard player by of John Young. Number four, guitarist Dave Bainbridge. And number seven, bass player John Poole. So really polling high with the readers of Prog Magazine. So definitely a band to keep their your eye on as they continue forward in their career. Um, Prog singles, like I said, I have a pretty giant list and a lot of things to cover here. So first of all, of course, is that Peter Gabriel single, uh, Panopticom. Please check that one out on the list. I'm sure many of you, most of you probably have heard that already, but um, it's there to check out if you haven't. 
Also, Fido released a new track called Enigmatic Terminus. Uh, this is from his work in progress, uh, an album that should be upcoming in the fall of this year, Automoto Animus. I'm a huge Fido fan. I love Doomsday Afternoon. I love Snowtorch. I loved Infernal that he came out with last. Uh, it's been a little bit of a while since we've heard rumblings from Fido about his next work, so this is really an exciting thing to hear about and to know that there's new music upcoming from Fido, so hopefully that plays out in the new year. Uh, Riverside Friend or Foe is another prog single I've put on. Their new album comes out in a week, January 20th. This is the opening track from the album. In fact, I'll take this uh, moment to announce that I'm doing Riverside Week this next week on the channel. I'm, I'm doing this somewhat new thing. I kind of have done it in the past, but now I'm like making it more official that certain weeks are going to be devoted to certain prog bands that are releasing new material throughout the year. So this week is going to be Riverside Week. There's going to be a Haken Week later on in the year when they release their album in March, where I'm going to cover their a review of their new album, uh, ID Entity, which I've been really loving. I'm going to do an album rankings of their catalog. Um, they have eight albums to their name now, and I want to rank them and talk about talk through them uh, somewhat briefly just to give you an idea of how I feel about their catalog. And then I'm going to do a top five that features the top five Riverside singles or songs. And so I'm excited to uh, get into that stuff. I really love Riverside. They're one of my favorite bands. So I just like this idea of dialing down into these groups Uh in these weeks. I'm going to do a transatlantic week also when they come out with their live album um, in February. So a lot of cool ones to, to kick off the new year. Riverside this upcoming week. In February we'll have transatlantic week. And then in March we'll have uh, Haken week also. So that should be fun. But this is a new single from Riverside Friend or Foe. Uh, transatlantic also has a, a, a single out, Rose Colored Glasses from the live album, uh, like I mentioned above. Um, Mike Keneally has a new release coming out, and so he's released a track from it called Celery that has a really entertaining video. Um, of course, Mike Keneally is former Frank Zappa alumni, and Steve Vai is also on this on this track. I believe Nick Virgilio drums on it. The upcoming solo album is going to be called The Thing That Knowledge Can't Eat, being released on February 24th. It's already available for pre-order, and if you pre-order it from Mike Keneally, it seems that you get a, a download of the album right now, so you get to hear the full album Um with an mp3 download so that's a cool cool thing but it seems like it's going to be a cool album one that i'm looking forward to and may cover later in the year also on the prog singles list i've put the tangent uh, a crisis in midlife a live performance of it they're coming out with a live album very shortly here uh, that i may cover soon on the channel uh, so that should be cool a big triple lp a uh, live project that should be a lot of fun to dive into. I love the tangent. Andy Tillerson is one of my favorite artists, and he really helms this project of classic symphonic prog. I really love it. I have a track from E-Molecule. They also have an upcoming album. Uh, this track is called The Architect. Uh, there's also, I believe they just came out with a track. In fact, uh, the track is... Uh, Mastermind, E Molecule's Mastermind from the album The Architect. I got things a little bit uh, mixed here, but yeah, the track is called Mastermind that was just released as a single from their upcoming album coming out February 10th. And E Molecule is a band that features Sound of Contact members Simon Collins and Kelly Nordstrom. A, a much darker, more tool inspired, uh, more moody, atmospheric prog, I think, is what you can expect from E Molecule. But it sounds promising so far. I've, I've listened a bit to the album, and it's really an interesting listen. I'm excited to, to talk it talk about it when it comes out later um catatonia released a, tr a single called birds from their upcoming album their 12th record sky void sky void of stars which comes out next week also along with the riverside release so this is a really cool uh it's a quick and energetic sound on this new release uh showcasing their potential and genre bending style and it's carried by rinsky's long longing vocals so really cool track birds check that one out winery dogs also has a new track mad world that came out uh, this is from their third album which is coming out February 3rd. Another album I may give uh, a review to, uh, depending on my schedule. But yeah, I'm excited about this album. Any project involving Mike Portnoy is interesting to me. It's a basically a hard rock trio. 
Uh, and they just perform really solid hard rock classic music. So I'm really excited for that album. Uh, I'm putting on the list RPWL and their track Victim of Desire from their upcoming album Crime Scene, which comes out March 17th. So another album to look forward to in the prog realm. Leprous have released a live performance of On Hold. I believe it's live in studio clip uh, taken from their latest album, Aphelion. So that's a really cool track to check out, somewhat promoting their upcoming tour and some of their releases that they're coming out with, tour edition of Aphelion, um, as well as a live release on vinyl. So that should be cool to look into. And then finally, Periphery. Not really a band I'm a huge fan of. They're very much in the aggressive, growly space, you know, the more extreme tech metal uh, gent style, uh, in fact. But they've released a pair of singles this week also called Wildfire and Zagreus. Uh, they're pretty well known. They're a pretty popular band. One of the more notable uh, prog bands, so to speak, at least from a mainstream uh, perspective. They get a lot of attention even from mainstream music. Um, and this album is that these singles come from is Periphery 5. And it somewhat has a tongue-in-cheek uh, title, D Gent is Not a Genre, which is something a lot of people say. I think it's like a meme or something. But that album, Periphery 5, uh, is arriving March 10th. So if you're interested in Periphery and their more aggressive heavy metal sound and style, I'm putting their singles in the description as well. Very heavy, a little bit on the extreme end for me and my taste, but I know a lot of other people really love them, so I wanted to point your attention that way since it's a notable uh, notable thing to mention in the prog realm and they're doing a spring tour with under oath as well um, probably to promote their new record so should be uh, some interesting stuff ahead for, for periphery so those are all the singles a big list of a lot of music to check out you can cherry pick the tracks that sound interesting to you um, but that's what I wanted to mention and for the channel itself we're starting off the new year here so the, I took a little bit of a break for the past couple weeks I did a bit of a prog preview show where I talked about some of the upcoming albums this year that I'm excited about I did a collaborative video with some of my YouTube friends that uh, that came out last week on notes reviews channel uh, it was a quarter four to 2022 uh, video that talked about our favorite releases from the end of last year, which was a lot of fun. I love those videos. We do them quarterly. Um, we also do a lot of collaborative videos on a monthly basis on Similitude of Prague. We might be doing one of those coming up shortly, so check all those out. Those are really important videos to me, and I think a lot of you would like uh, checking those out. I'm sure many of you have seen some of those, so um, we're joined by some really fun people and it's just a great opportunity to discuss Prague. That's part of the dream of having this YouTube channel and, and being part of this community is being part of these shows and being part of the the zeitgeist of the YouTube Prague community and being able to share my thoughts with some of these fellow YouTubers who are I really respect and admire their channels. So really great. Uh, this week, like I mentioned, is Riverside Week. I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited to talk about their new album and to do some album rankings and a top five of their singles. Uh, this should be a fun time. Um, so that's coming up ahead. There's going to be a show with Jana this Sunday. It might not be a typical prog song Sunday. It's more of like a special bonus type episode where she shares some of her music with me. We had a lot of fun doing that. We were thinking to release that closer to her birthday last weekend, but we just got so busy and, and we're doing other things that it just didn't happen. So we're thinking to press it forward to this Sunday so you guys can see it. We had a lot of fun with it. And I think if you're fans of me and Jana and our uh, banter and, and the way we interact or are curious about Jana's taste in music, since I'm always forcing her to, to listen to my music, this is kind of a turning the tables moment. So that should be a fun show upcoming. And then we'll get back in the swing of our Prog Song Sundays with two very notable Prog songs that we're going to be covering Um shortly that I think a lot of you will be really excited for. So sorry that it's been a little bit slow here on the channel as I get gently eased into this new year, but I have a lot of plans and I'm really excited about it. I plan to cover a lot of new album releases. That's what I'm focusing a lot on this year is really reviewing a lot of the big prog albums that are coming out. I'm doing an album spotlight every Tuesday so that I can keep up with all the new releases and talk about them and recommend them to you guys give you guys a, a feel of what these albums are all about. 
and I'm really excited about it. So should be a great year of Prague. There's a lot of great releases on the horizon that a lot of people are excited about, including me. And hopefully you guys will stick with me, stick with the channel, and that you're still having fun here. I know this was a little bit of a longer show than typical for New Music Weekly, but if you guys stuck around, thank you guys for all your support, and I hope to catch you guys in future episodes. So keep enjoying the music out there, and have a great year. It's going to be a fun one. Bye, everybody.